Hello guys, this is Vivek Sharma and welcome to the third episode of this game development series on cshapcorner.com. In this video, we will learn how we can add scripts to our project. We will learn about basic predefined methods in Unity, vectors and input methods in Unity. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So to begin with, first of all, we will create a new folder inside our assets panel. We are going to rename it as scripts. And then we are going to create a new script inside the scripts folder and let's rename it as dino script double click on it to open it up inside our text editor i am using visual studio over here over here as you can see we have two pre-given methods first is start another one is update start method is called only once in the beginning of the game and update method is called on each and every frame continuously so now let me give a brief of what we want to achieve over here we want our dinosaur to keep moving in the x direction continuously and our dinosaur to jump in the y direction whenever somebody hits the left mouse button or touches the screen. And we are going to achieve it by adding velocity in the x direction continuously and y direction occasionally. Velocity is a physics component and to assess that we will be needing a rigid body or a rigid body 2D in our case as we are creating a 2D game. So first of all, we will be declaring a private variable of type rigid body 2D and let's call it dino body. So now what we want to do is get reference to the original rigid body 2D attached to our dinosaur and use it here. So to do that, I'm going to write dino body equal to get component rigid body 2D. This will get the component rigid body 2D attached to our dinosaur game object. Remember that I'm writing this inside the start method because I want this to be called only once whenever the game starts. Now we want to move our dinosaur and for that let's learn a new concept called vectors. So generally vectors are of two types vector 2 and vector 3. Vector 2 contains two parameters one is x value another one is y value and vector 3 contains three values value in x value in y and value in z. You can use vector2 whenever you have two inputs x and y and can use vector3 whenever you have three inputs x, y and z. But also in vector3 if you leave the third value empty or assigns it equal to zero it starts to work as vector2. So over here in our script what I'm gonna do is create a new variable of type float and call it x velocity. This is going to be the velocity of our dinosaur in the x direction and to move our dinosaur I will be adding velocity to our dino body. To do that, I will write dino body dot velocity equal to vector 3 or vector 2 if you want, velocity in x direction and velocity in y direction. And of course, this is a 2D game, that's why I'm not gonna use the z value. So the velocity in x is going to be the variable we just declared, which is x velocity, but we don't wanna make any changes to the velocity in the y direction when the dinosaur is moving constantly. So over here, for velocity in y direction, I will use dinobody.velocity.y. We will get back to Unity. We'll click on Dino Player, click on Add Component to add a new component. We'll search for Dino Script, we'll add that. And over here, we can see an empty field for x velocity. I will give it a value of 5. And then I will hit Play. And now as we can see, our dinosaur is not just falling, it's also moving in the x direction. Now I will go back to my sprites folder and will add two more sprites, one for the enemy and another one to create a ground. I will drag the ground sprite to the hierarchy panel and will change its size to make it look like a ground. By the way, you can also achieve it by going to the inspector panel and changing the values inside the transform section. Now I will quickly rename this to ground and now I will go back to the inspector panel, we'll click on add component and we'll add a box collider and a rigid body to this as well. But now if I hit play, what we see is our ground is also falling down. And this is definitely something we don't want to achieve. So to fix this, inside the rigid body 2D, we will change the body type from dynamic to kinematic. And now if we hit play, our ground is not falling and our dinosaur is moving in the x direction. Perfect. Now comes the second phase of our dinosaur's movement. So now what we want to do is move our dinosaur in the y direction whenever somebody clicks the left mouse button or taps on the screen. So to do that, first of all, we will create a new variable of type float and call it y velocity. This is going to be the velocity of our dinosaur in the y direction. 
and now inside the update method i'm gonna put a condition that if there is a left mouse button click or a tap then do this task so over here i'm gonna write if input dot get mouse button down zero then add velocity to our dinosaur in the y direction over here i have used zero as the parameter for get mouse button down because zero represents the left mouse button if we write one it represents the right mouse button and if we write two it represents the middle mouse button but we are gonna use zero for now and inside this if condition i'm gonna write dino body dot velocity equal to new vector 3 velocity in x and velocity in y this time velocity in y is going to be y velocity and the velocity in x is going to be an unaltered velocity so that's why i'm gonna use dinobody.velocity.x over here i will go back to unity click on dino player and then over here we have another open field for y velocity i'm gonna change its value to 5 and now as we can see our dinosaur is moving in the x direction and whenever we hit the left mouse button it goes into the y direction but here is a catch if we keep on clicking the left mouse button our dinosaur starts to fly and this is definitely not what we want to achieve so in the next tutorial we will try to fix this and we will be adding some enemies for our dinosaur so till then goodbye have fun and don't forget to follow and subscribe because the best is to come